Now, on the topic of your writing, I have to ask you about your open letter to Oscar Pistorius that yes. went viral in 2014. Right. Why did you sit down to write that? Because I just, it was a truth. It was an aha moment. Everything I write, and everybody's got their own truth. But it was just as, I think it was, I'd walked the palms and I thought about this and I thought, you know what, there's something about that man's character the rec that was like the man who fell off the horse. Yeah. The recklessness, the the uh, bravado, the, you know, it, probably the wrinkled cashew nut. That's what all men behave like that. That's what I think. That's why men behave the way they do. It's all insecurity. And I just thought there is a similarity and I dashed that off. I didn't think about it. And then all these spittle flecked Pistorians were, oh, she's just Eugene to Blanche's whore and she could never write. And I, that was quite astonishing. That story, I had media from all over the world. Mm -hmm. Countries I've never even known were phoning me. Wow. And, you know, CNN and Fox and whatever. And I'm doing these interviews with my little pups. Are, but, but, mommy, 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 are you saying the right thing? Are you saying the right thing? It was so funny. It was bizarre. To hear those comments so many years later, right. people calling you Eugene Terre Blanche's whore. I know, it's terrible. It's slut shaming. It's terrible. It's like an avalanche of dehumanizing me that happened. And no more. I'm taking control of the narrative now. I've had it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I sound so threatening. I've had it. No mas. You can. <laughs> Petra Hedia. See, that's the Spanish I've learned. What a tragedy. Now, you called Oscar a faux hero. Yes. In that, in that right. letter. What did you mean by that? Because a hero, according to myth, um, goes on a journey, experiences hardships, learns. It's a soul's journey. It's a soul's growth. And I can't say this for sure, but it doesn't look to me as though he's really learned anything or evolved or indeed has any real repentance. That throwing up was, I, I didn't believe. Yeah. So a true hero will emerge having learned and having taught people. And that's what I hope so much from my, my saga. I hope people get, I hope firstly, I'll, they must be amused because I don't take myself seriously. Tell me, I, I'm going right. to ask you what right. um, you want people to get from your memoir. Yes, but right. Tell me, what's the most amusing thing that right. you actually sat down, wrote in this book, and just laughed? Yes, because um, there was an incident with the man who fell off the horse. He was pushing <laughs> the back. He was pushing and pushing, and it was in the mud. It was in the mud. And I'm only going to say he ripped one. You have to say. read the book to find You'll out. You'll have to read the book. In America, <laughs> they go, I can't even. I can't even say that word, but it was funny. <laughs> and when I wrote that, I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot about that. Right. You are hilarious. <laughs> now, tell me what you want people to take away from your memoir. Why should they read it? Um, that, that, it's n that the values I had were wrong. I mean, I still love fabulous handbags, but my life doesn't depend on them. The, I would like people to learn more to be more compassionate, towards each other, to realize that even if you're a snowflake, you can be part of an avalanche that can destroy somebody's life. Yeah. So. What's the most fabulous handbag you've ever owned? It's beautiful. Right? I'm going to take a closer look. Boobery, as they call it in America, boobery, <laughs> burberry. But this, this is the funny thing. I got it at a consignment shop in America, and I, I saw one the other night at Hyde Park for 40,000 mm. rand. Now, you see, that's, that's wicked. That's wicked. Give the much. money to animal ch charities. Animal charities. Animal, yeah. And here's the thing, please can I say this? Yeah. Don't cut it out. Don't cut it out. <laughs> because I'm an old woman, pom mom in Lambertville, waiting on tables, the abuse. And then I came here, and Gavin Roger, who's the most talented, brilliant, brilliant star, uh, gave me two astonishing frocks, gowns. And I was so amazed and so touched. Um, that I'm going to ask him if I can maybe raffle one for some animal charity. Oh, that sounds But wonderful. if you're very thin, because you have to be thin like, you know, the it's nine inch hips will fit. Beautiful. Gavin, Gavin Roger. Roger. Thank you, Gavin. Love you, love you. What do you, I, before I do this, I just want to ask you what your thoughts are on the whole Gavin Roger controversy. You know, I think because he's, he's, he's such a bright star, people always want to, I don't know the, all the details, but I know it's a theme in human nature. People are, 
envious and greedy, but mostly envious, and then sometimes envy turns into schadenfreude, which is glee at other people's, and I honestly think, let people grow, let them version, learn from them, just bask in their, their star, and I think that he's been attacked because he's, he's too good. There you have it. There you have it. That's my wisdom on him. <laughs> you can find Jamie Allen's Jamie Confidential in all good bookstores in South Africa. If you've already picked it up and had a read, let us know what you thought in the comments section below this video.